We are excited to get started here. And just to let you know, this is part two, a uh, session two of our client interaction webinar series. Uh, first, really focused in on reducing turnover, and this one is on the impact prophecy can have on orientation time. But to go ahead and do a welcome and kind of let you know who will be presenting today, I am Meredith Engel. I've been with Prophecy for over seven years now. For those of you on today's webinar that are familiar with APS's Gnosis product, Prophecy is actually another APS product that offers an online assessment tool that has been proven successful in helping clients increase retention, streamline onboarding, and maximize orientation. But everyone is in for a treat today as I'm joined by two experts on the topic of customizing orientation of new hires. The first is Ann Hackman, which you see here. Prior to working with Prophecy, she was actually a Prophecy client. And while she served as the coordinator of nursing outcomes and professional development at a large academic medical health system in the north, she conducted a research study to quantify the benefits her staff was actually seeing by using Prophecy's assessments to customize orientation. So she has some fascinating results, and she's going to share those with us in just a little bit. And then our second speaker is Jody DeStichter from the University of Colorado Health Clinical Education and Innovation Center. She is a current Prophecy client, and she will be sharing her recent success in gaining buy-in from educators to transition from standardized new employee training sessions to dynamic knowledge gap-driven orientation sessions. So we have a lot that we'll be going over during today's webinar. Specifically during today's presentation, uh, we've designed it to address three topics we thought you would like to discuss. The first being how nursing assessments work or how using assessments really translates into increasing retention and streamlining onboarding and reducing orientation time. So we're going to provide a high-level overview of how Prophecy clients are using our assessments to do just that, to improve orientation. And then in addition, we will learn some best practices from the current client uh, with their perspective on having a smooth transition into customized orientation sessions. Now we ask if you have other topics that you would like discussed, please add them into the chat and our team will capture them. Um, we have you in listen-only mode, so that chat is going to be your best tool to get in touch with us during the presentation. For an overview, APS is a company dedicated to helping individual clinicians reach their highest potential. We work in over 150 health systems, some of those including Dignity, Ascension, Memorial Hermann, Kaiser Permanente, but we help them provide insight into clinicians' strengths and weaknesses. And then based on the results, we help develop personalized onboarding, orientation, placement, and learning opportunities. We do that through two products, the hiring and onboarding solution. Again, that's Prophecy, which we'll be focusing on today. We also have an education risk reduction solution, Gnosis. We have a wonderful team of people dedicated to supporting our clients and delivering better patient care. And that team actually includes 15 clinicians on staff, and those are both doctors and nurses. Now, Prophecy in itself is a national leader in nursing assessment. And that scale really provides us unique insights into nursing performance that are unavailable elsewhere. In addition to a large client base of hospitals, we also work with over 400 staffing agencies throughout the United States. And we cover pretty much all the nursing specialties with 100 clinical exams in over 40 areas of practice. And the way the Prophecy Assessment works is that it evaluates skills in three distinct areas. Prophecy was designed by nurses for nurses. So it's based on first-hand knowledge of what it takes to be an effective nurse. The assessments themselves have been validated by external ex experts who confirm that they measure the right requirements for nursing jobs and that those who do well on the assessments are likely to do well on their performance evaluation. So it has a predictive nature in it. But what makes Prophecy different from other assessments offered in the industry is that it's a holistic assessment. So it evaluates the competencies of these clinicians in three main areas, all of which are critical for a nurse's success. So we have the clinical piece that looks at job knowledge skills, those technical skills that are required, situational, which is looking at how they interact, those soft skills of interacting with physicians and patients and families, and then also the behavioral. Does this candidate have the right personality to work in this particular unit? Are there going to be counterproductive behaviors experienced on the job? when they are 
placed. So most facilities that we meet with only look at one of these areas. What processing does is it makes it easy to look at all the aspects that impact patient care. In particular, the behavioral assessment looks at the personality attributes that are critical for effective patient care, especially in the high-pressure environments which nurses find themselves in day in and day out. So using all three of these pieces is what makes prophecy so robust and effective because it provides a predictive score for common nursing specialties. And that comes from our scale and the independent validation. It enables us to predict the impact of the nurse um, and their performance over time. We call this score the Prophecy One score, and it's available in most common specialties like ICU, med surge, emergency department, LD, and NICU. And it allows you to predict the nurse's likelihood of success in that specific role. So, not just on a nurse overall, but in that specific specialty. This combines the clinical, the situational, and the behavioral assessment into one weighted percentage. So, using this holistic approach to testing, health systems and clients have seen lots of positive results. One of those is an increased nurse retention. On average, our clients are reporting that they've reduced their turnover rate by approximately 75%, which translates into saving them about $350,000 to upwards of a million dollars per year. Another benefit is streamlining the onboarding process, which includes reducing the administrative burden of new hires and bringing them on board. And then improved orientation. Clients have used uh, the prophecy results to reduce orientation by up to two weeks. And we're going to get into that in a moment. But first, we're going to pause here for just a moment and put up a poll for everyone to answer. So if you can please uh, look at your screen and select. Our poll question is, do you measure your nursing turnover rate? And the answer may be no. Uh, we find that this answer is all over the board, so we've given several options to choose from. So it looks like the majority of you all have, so we can go ahead and publish those results. All right, so this is really what we see standard um, across the board. About a third of everyone does not track that nursing turnover rate, and that might be your position is not directly, you know, in that line where you need to, so you may not have it. And then, you know, from those, for the rest of you that do, it's really split pretty evenly. So some of you, it's a little less than 10%, others 11 to 20%, 21 to 30. So the idea here is that everyone, you know, across the board is experiencing some sort of nursing turnover. And um, we hope that at the end of this presentation, you're going to leave understanding how clients have been successful in using prophecy to get one of the levers that moves uh, to, that contributes to reducing turnover rate and ultimately improving patient safety. And one of those really is engaging new hires in a strong orientation. My colleague Ann Hackman, who I mentioned earlier, used Prophecy uh, before being on staff with Prophecy during her time in a large academic health system. And so now she's going to share her experience and the impact Prophecy has had on orientation at that facility. So thanks for joining us today, Ann. Well, thank you, Meredith. It's my pleasure. I'm really excited to share our experience at, um, at the facility at this health system I was at prior to coming to Prophecy because I think there's a lot of meaning there that hopefully will, will address some of the issues that some of you are being challenged with as well. You know, hospitals have a lot of challenges. The first is, of course, value-based purchasing. So, you know, we're all trying to improve patient outcomes as well as improve patient satisfaction and our efficiency. And at the same time, we have to both train and retain our workforce. I don't know how it is in your, your facility, but where we are, graduate nurses are the pipeline for us. And, and I think they probably are around the country as more nurses are retiring. So we're really relying on the graduate nurse to fill those slots. However, that's the challenge in order to make them effectively trained and bring them up to speed as quickly as possible. We had to search for some new ways. So prior to using Prophecy, we had a fairly standard nurse residency program for about five years. We hired between 100 and 150 um, GNs a year, and of course that number has nearly doubled at this point. But at the time, you know, we were pretty complacent. We had um, our precepted experience in, in order, mostly about eight weeks for med surge, 12 weeks for ICU, 16 to 26 weeks in some of the higher specialties such as NICU and pediatrics. 
And we use the Casey Sink um, Graduate Nurse Experience Survey as a measurement of how effective the residency program was. And we administered that at both six and at 12 months. The residents would then attend monthly class for about four hours where we, um, throughout the whole year, so we had a whole 12 month residency program, and not unlike many of the standard programs that are out there. However, we challenged ourselves to figure this out. We had to find a better way. That was expensive. It was resource intensive. It was very time consuming for us as educators. And what we were seeing was that graduate nurses would gain that experience and then leave. They would leave because they either weren't happy with their specialty um, or now they were more marketable. And so we had to figure out a way to make sure that we chose the right people to begin with and that we kept them engaged and kept them in our organization. And the other part was just to reduce that resource intensiveness of the whole program. So we wanted to accelerate the learning process, but we were really worried about doing so and um, then also compromising the graduate nurse's confidence or competence. So we too you know, wanted to improve those patient outcomes and also to retain our nurses. So our research question was, can the time from employment to competent practice be accelerated through the use of customized learning plans, a clinical immersion experience that I'll talk a little bit about, and simulation and technology-based learning? So on the next slide, we have some of the data that we looked at. Did we put metrics in place to make sure that we weren't compromising competency or confidence? And some of those included, we measured the length of orientation, our scores on prophecy and whether they improved in the first six months on MedSurge clinical and the behavioral and interpersonal um, assessments. And we continued to use Casey Fink um, survey tool because we had that retrospective data, so we were able to see whether there was improvement. We looked at, um, these are some of the benefits of using a standardized assessment tool. Um, especially here are some of the results from a clinical assessment, from this a prophecy assessment, because it identifies those very specific areas for improvement. So it'll show you where you have high performance and high knowledge understanding and then where there are the gaps. It also drills down into specific questions and specific knowledge domains and, and really issues so that that allows you to customize the education onboarding process. Prior to this, we pretty much had a standard curriculum. Everybody got the same thing no matter what. And with being able to really look at the results from the prophecy assessment, we could customize their orientation. So the benefits of customizing orientation are like huge. This was the best thing ever. We were able to target that content area, as I mentioned. Um, but I, I want to back up just a moment because one of the new things that happened when we started using prophecy was it started with the selection of the applicant to begin with. Graduate nurses all think, seem to think that they want to work in pediatrics <laughs> and NICU, and they may or may not be suited for that. So by using the Prophecy Behavioral Assessment, we could identify what clinical specialty would be most appropriate for them. And it does so in such a way that it, it calls to their attention to detail, their stress tolerance, um, how fast they learn. I mean, there's so many things that you learn from the behavioral assessment that is helpful in helping them be successful because that's what keeps them in the profession. So we made sure that we had the right selection of employees to begin with. And then also through the behavioral assessment, we could identify who would be a good preceptor for that person um, because we could match up those personality styles and the learning styles with an adequate preceptor that would would meet those needs, that ensured a very positive onboarding experience. Then but through administering both the situational and clinical knowledge assessments during week one of orientation, we were able to customize their learning plans. And that's really where it comes down to. If a nurse had done a senior practicum in our organization, um, they could sometimes be feeling very confident about their setting about the clinical specialty, um, they knew the workflow, and so it made a huge difference as to whether they, they you know, needed the same amount of time as those who had not. If they'd been an employee in that area, or even within our health system somewhere, sometimes their learning could be accelerated. So in that way, we focused on the gaps. Um, for example, if someone in, had um, performed lower in a knowledge domain of respiratory, for example, we might customize their orientation to allow them to spend some time with respiratory therapy. 
Um, if it was cardiology, they might spend a day in the cath lab. So we were really able to tune in to where their specific knowledge gaps are. And you know what happens when you do that? They feel respected. They feel like they are individual. It's not a cookie cutter approach, and they feel like they are really being listened to and everything is, is special for them. And I mentioned earlier the other thing that we did was around week five or six, we did what we called a clinical immersion week. So it's a total of five days. Three days were skills lab, video scenarios, and mannequins. The other two days we used standardized patients. We actually had people in beds um, acting out scenarios that required the graduate nurses to use critical judgment, and then they got a lot of peer feedback from that. So again, the benefits of customizing were that they felt special. We improved that compatibility with preceptors. A lot more attention to detail. Those people that were fast learners could go at their their own pace. Those who needed a little bit more of our time got a little bit more time because we had that for them. Um, so we focused our resources just exactly on where it was needed. On the next slide, we talk about our results. So we were able to shorten just the first two cohorts. We were able to shorten the average length of precepted orientation by two weeks in the ICU and by one week on med surge. Um, we also then looked at um, their time on the clinical knowledge scores, or their scores actually, um, and they improved. So we administered the prophecy clinical assessment towards the end of their precepted orientation to validate they were ready to move on to independent practice. And those scores increased by an average of 12%. Some did exceptionally more than that. Um, we also looked at the Casey Fink scores because we were concerned that by accelerating um, the practice that GNs might feel less confident. We were totally amazed that instead our scores went up dramatically. In fact, many of the areas they demonstrated up to a 93 to 95% confidence level, which was unheard of in comparison to our previous um, experience. So we were very excited that we, we felt like we had something going that was really good. This was the TADA. So by, age, by being able to reduce that precepted orientation time, in just the first two cohorts, which was six months' time, we saved our hospital over $85,000. And that was only by measuring the reduced dual staffing that happens when you have a precepted orientation. So needless to say, everyone was really excited about that. And the program has continued. And now we're sharing this with all of you. Well, thank you so much, Ann. And you're right, it is impressive for your institution to demonstrate that type of ROI just in the first six months. So I'm sure they were very, very excited. Um, but yes, you were successful at bringing you know, the prophecy assessments to your facility then. And likewise, I would love to introduce a current client who has been instrumental in taking prophecy assessments help system wide as well. And so Joey is from the University of Colorado Health System. And she's going to be talking through their journey of implementing Prophecy System-wide. She currently directs a team of educators spanning their five hospitals, and it is currently growing still, um, using Prophecy's results to customize orientation of the new hires. And the health system employs 4,800 RNs alone. And Jody spent the first 10 years of her nursing career as a bedside nurse on the night shift and then transitioned into an educator role for the facility's resource role. And since that time, she has been in education for the past eight years. So thanks so much, Jody. Well, thank you, Meredith. And it's a delight to join both you and Anne in your uh, journey here with Prophecy. So just want to sort of give you a basic um, overview of what we decided. Um, we needed to first start with assessing. Um, how did we decide to do this? So what we did is we established what we needed to do. What we found through our system is each one of our regions was using a different assessment tool when um, onboarding new RNs. So we went ahead and said, you know what, um, one of our facilities was using uh, Prophecy and said, why don't we look at this platform and decide to move forward. So what we did is we decided to move forward as a system and decided to make Prophecy um, our primary um, assessment tool for onboarding new hires, especially with our RNs. And this really is going to, um, what this has done is it's really encouraged us to save some time and also it helps us with interpreting and reading our results. So um, we've really found that Prophecy has been very helpful for us. So how did 
did we do this? These are the steps that we used um, to create that custom orientation plan. What we do is we send out the assessments after the new person has been hired, we send out the assessments. Um, the assess assessments have been determined by the um, specialty areas. So whatever the specialty area has decided to utilize, then they will go ahead and we will go ahead and send them. Um, so we go ahead, we try to have the assessments assessments completed prior to them onboarding, then we, what we really love about Prophecy is we get that immediate response. So after they've taken the assessment, the results go to our educator, and then our educator can really go in and get it and customize the reports using Prophecy, and then um, we love to just, um, it's, it's such a time saver compared to what we used to do, and I think that's probably one of our biggest um, benefits is that we Truly, it's been a cost savings for us. Um, so what we like too is we get the customized report, and once we get the customized report, we actually can break um, break it down. And as you can see from the slide, um, it does give us a breakdown of what areas they're doing well in, what areas they need to work on. And then the best part is that they have the Lippincott. Lippincott is um, linked. And so what we have our educators do is when they do that individual orientation plan, they will utilize the Lippincott and say, you know what, I think because you didn't do very well here, this we should probably work on this. Or look at uh, Lippincott Advisor and look at this and also look at um, the other benefits. So it saves our educator time and resources, and it also fills in some of those knowledge gaps um, for our new employees. And of course, that's always a helpful thing. So how we figured out um, some of our best practices that we actually utilize is we have a detailed process. We know what we're doing. We know when that person is onboarded, what we're going to do, and how we're going to do it. We do have um, individual plans for each area. And I told Meredith my story is in our intensive care unit, they have actually stages. And their very first stage, that's where they implement a lot of the information from Prophecy and the Prophecy assessment. And then later on through their orientation, I think at four months they will reassess their um, employees, um, all their new people. And of course, if they fail, they do need to do um, another assessment. Um, however, we also asked that um, our ICU educator really wanted to go ahead and continue to provide um, to see if there was an improvement. And so we ha we love the whole thing of the first time around they can take prophecy assessment A, then they can come back and take the B option, which is a little bit different. And again, it sort of verifies how well we're doing. Um, and that's something that ICU has really taken, it's really taken it and run because they've done a nice job and we've actually been able to retain more nurses in our intensive care area. Um, another one of the best practices we utilize is um, identifying those uh, first adopter of educators as our champions. I must tell you, in our organization, we didn't even have to worry about that because all of our educators were so excited to get something and to get the immediate feedback. They absolutely love this process. It is so easy. It's nice for them to just be able to um, receive the results and then make a, a customized orientation plan. So it's really great. Also, we do select, uh, solicit a lot of feedback back from our nurse managers, our educators, our preceptors and new hires. We've actually um, utilized the preceptor assessment for um, uh, one of our service lines so that we could assess them and see how well they were doing, what we needed to work on, and we're in that process right now. And then, of course, um, we do have our share of successes and failures. Um, some of the things that we definitely find as successful is it's time-saving, it definitely is cost-saving, but we also have found that if they don't, if our educators don't use it on a regular basis, um, they do tend to forget what they're supposed to do, that kind of thing. And then that's when I come back in and I say, hey, let's do this and let's um, work on, an, you know, making sure that we get that individual uh, orientation plan. So. That's about it from my end, Ms. Meredith. Well, thank you. I appreciate all of your feedback here. It's always nice to know how someone currently in the field is, is really utilizing the product. So I appreciate that. Um, it's interesting to note, you mentioned the Lippincott, and that is we do have the Lippincott integrated. We also have Elsevier Mosby Nursing Suite 2. So um, I know you all absolutely enjoy the Lippincott being linked there. And just for others on the line, if they're more familiar with Elsevier's Mosby products, and I just wanted to mention that. So thank you. 
And just from today's webinar, I wanted to go over again what we're hoping you're, you're taking away from your time with us. Uh, the first is how the three assessments really work together to provide the scores and how that data actually drives information to, that, to then turn into orientation decisions. And using the assessments to prove, improve orientation or how the assessment data um, by the topic areas shows the individual strengths and weaknesses as a team of nurses and then also you can drill down into that individual uh, portion. And of course the best practices from Jody, the smooth transition into customized orientation sessions. Um, I just have loved hearing from these two nurse leaders who've created unique programs to customize their orientations. And I'm sure you all have as well, but there's probably some questions still outstanding out there. So if you have questions, please go ahead and use your chat box. We're going to stay online here uh, for another 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so, and cover as many of these questions that have come in. Uh, one question that did come through during the webinar was, was there any pushback to stop using other assessments and centralize one platform for the system? How did you address that? So I assume that's of course, coming to Jody. So, Jody, again, that, that question is: Was there any pushback to stop using a different assessment and centralize one platform for the system? If so, how did you address it? Do you feel comfortable answering that? So, um, I can tell you that we did not have um, what 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 we did is we actually truly presented this to all of our nurse leaders, and it was presented. Prophecy did such a nice job of truly presenting this. This is evidence based practice. And they truly are wonderful to work with. They answered our questions. They came. They came to our different regions to um, demonstrate how their product worked, what works, what doesn't work. They provided us with best practice or best practices for our different areas. So um, we did not have a lot of pushback, which I guess was a good thing, because we 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 instantly were. Um, you know, taken in because it was truly evidence-based, it was validated, it's a great, like I said, it's a great tool. Did I answer that question thoroughly? Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I remember hearing back from the on-site training team when they came back, they kept saying, wow, they were wonderful to work with, they were so great. So I do remember when Felicia and her team were out there to help you all. So yes, thank you for that. Yes, so thank you. Keep watching. Yes. This is, this is Ann. I, we also, um, we had a similar experience, although I have to say that we had nurse educators that were um, clinging to a previous assessment process that we had at the time. And so you know what we did? The first cohort, we did both. We did prophecy assessments and we did our traditional assessment that is a product that's been out in the market for quite a long time. And we did a comparison. And it was so interesting. We did, the comparison was with the users to say how you know were the results better, um, you know with the ease of use, you know the applicability of it. And hands down, they were all over prophecy. They're like, this is it. We're done. You get rid of the old one, and we're ready to roll with this one. They really liked it. Great. Well, thank you both. Um, we do have another question that came in, and it's a question very specific to how the assessments are validated. Because um, we, I guess probably confuse people by saying it's an external validation. And I can speak to that. Um, we have a complete study uh, that goes on. We actually partner with several firms, but one main one that we partner with is Biddle Consulting Group. And they are leaders in pre-employment selection procedures, which is a, you know, a way of just saying testing before you hire. And so you have to be fair and compliant across the board for any protected class codes um, for the EEOC to minimize adverse impact. And so we put our assessments through a formal validation process, um, and that inc includes having nurses in that specialty and supervisors throughout the entire process. And um, I will definitely follow up with this individual with some more information about the validation process, but we have everything um, in line for every single one of our assessments that you would want it for. So that's a great piece, and I'm glad that question was asked. Um, we have a webinar that's devoted directly to that question. Just know that we appreciate your time. Um, every one of you that's on today's call is extremely busy and we don't take for granted getting a little bit of time with you all today. So thank you so much. Hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day and we hope to speak to you again in the near future.